Um, but I just wanted to, because you guys, I grew up watching you guys have Bible studies when I was a little kid. That's my, my, um, memory of you guys having a Bible study, like having a robe and sitting on the couch and having coffee and having a journal and having a Bible and reading the Bible. So, I mean, I watched you guys as I was growing up having Bible studies and um, well now that I'm not so crazy and stuff I see I remember that and it's inspiring so I just thought I could maybe make a video about you guys saying like tips on how to have a good quiet time or anything you could say about having a quiet time what makes you want to have a quiet time what are the things that that you think about every day to have a good quiet time and stuff. Oh, um, when I became a Christian, um, I realized it isn't knowing about God, but it's knowing God. That's the important thing. God wants a relationship with us. And he, he's our, our soulmate. He's our source of our life. And the way that he chooses to communicate with us is through his word. Psalm 119 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In the Navigators, I went into some kind of Christian training. It was like intensive, and it was important for me to build a habit. But once you do something for 35 days, they said, it becomes a habit. So they said, start out with seven minutes in the morning. Uh, reading your word and praying, and then make it, you know, increase until you're actually writing down an application to what you read in the word, hmm. um, how you're going to apply that to your life each day, and it changed my life. Okay. I always loved the Bible. When I was a little kid, there was tornadoes, we had to go to the basement, take our one item that meant so much to us. And I took my Bible, Aww. even though I didn't know how to read it at that time. Yeah. Yeah. But God just put a love in my heart for the Bible. And uh, then after I was a Christian, I went to a church where the, the pastor really loved the Bible. And he'd take a verse apart and just preach the whole sermon on just a few words out of the Word of God. And it just got me all fired up about learning more yeah, from the Word. And uh, it's got, it's like a road map that you need to look at before you go about your day. It's like, you don't look at the map after you've gotten somewhere, you look at it before. So I'm not a morning person, but um, I started to have my quiet time in the morning. Um, works better. Another reason I feel like we should have quiet times is that we would starve. It's like going without food. You go without food, you would starve physically. You go out without spiritual food from the Word of God, you would starve spiritually. And I do when I go without it. And it's so refreshing to get back to it. How do you pick a place in the Bible to read? I have a bunch of devotion books, and I just kind of pick one up and look and what they have to say in the verses. There's more power in the Word of God than about what the writer wrote about it. So the Word of God might lead me to, the, the verses they give might lead me to do a, like a topical study on um, uh, anger or love or something that I see in that devotional, just to get me in the Word. Uh, if I don't have much time, I just read the devotional and the verses from that. Otherwise, you know, if I have a lot of time, then I can just uh, open the Bible and pray that God would lead me to a good place to read. Dad, do you have anything that uh, to say about um, quiet times? This all started back when I was a second year in college, or first year in college, a long time ago. Hmm. But, uh, you know, each one of us has a rebellious streak. Um, the Bible <laughs> says a sin mm -hmm. against God and, that, and our fellow man. Well, sin 
separates us from God. And uh, in Isaiah 59, 2, he says, But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear you. Well, I believe that God wants to have a relationship with every one of us. And just as intimate as when Adam and Eve were the first man and woman, I think um, he just wants to, he just loves us so much, you know, that that um, that he opens the door. And he, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So he, he wants to have a relationship with us, you know. Huh. And, uh, um, and I know my relationships started when, I think God was chasing me down through through uh, people around me who had a relationship with God. And, you know, I, and, uh, and they just explained the gospel to me and how to invite Christ into my heart, you know. And that's where it started. Hmm. You know, and I think we can have our rela- uh, part of our relationship with God with our quiet time. Uh, and, the, and the Word of God is... is uh, uh, so important, you know, to our quiet time, starting out in the Word of God, and John 14, 21, he says, uh, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. He says that he wants to manifest himself to us, and I think that's one, one thing that God loves to do for us, is to show himself to, to us. And, and I think quiet time is just a perfect time to do that. And uh, Lori was telling me earlier tonight that, you know, in the morning is, is a perfect time to do it because it's like a road map for your, for your day. And, uh, um, and you know, we've, we've got so many decisions to make and so many things. And if we, if we get our time with God in the morning, especially in his word, kind of uh, maps the day out for us yeah. and, and gives us a, a definitely a head start. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it really matters what time of day you do the Bible study? Does it have well, to be the morning? I, I, I don't think so. I think, you know, like Lori said, that she used to do pastors at night, and she was fine with that. And I think, you know, just, you know, when, when you have a, such a schedule that, you know, you your first thing that you have to do in the morning is get going to your work or whatever, you know. Maybe, maybe you know, just be flexible and just, you know, whenever you come back is fine, I think. Yeah. yeah, when I was working, I didn't have it every day. Yeah. I was, you know, I had to get to work at 6 in the morning. And uh, God understand it, understood that and really helped me out. And I would pray on my way to work that he would give it, be his love for the other people I was working with and what whatnot. And then when I had a nice long time in the morning, I would make up for kind of lost time. But now that we're retired, you know, we can spend every day, every morning with the <laughs> Lord. Nice. And, you know, God understands what your limitations are. He is such a wonderful God. He, he can have a relationship with every one of us at the same time and you know, he's, he's just an awesome God. He, he can do everything. Yeah. And I just, I just love that about him. Okay, so how in your lives has quiet time, have you seen the manifestation of God in it to either course correct you on your path or how have you felt God in your quiet time, his presence, and, and how has it given you wisdom? One of those. <laughs> Anybody. Like, you know, like, like Mom is really good about keeping a journal. You know, right. I'm not so, so much. I just, I just uh, plow right into it. And if, if God is speaking to me, you know, about something, I, you know, I just register it. And, and, uh, and, it, and it's so, uh, you know, God sees what our day is going to be like. And, and I think he just brings us to uh, the scriptures that we need for that day. What, what do you say? Um, I'd be 
crazier than a doorknob if it wasn't for the word. <laughs> and I'm going through my day, and God will bring a verse to me. Okay. That kind of straighten me out again. Uh -huh. uh, my emotions take over. My old nature takes over. But when I've memorized and meditated on the word, it comes back right when I need it. And it's God just leading me and guiding me. Like Psalm 119 says. It changed my whole life. Uh, my quiet time. Yeah. It's taken what God said and actually living it or trying to live it or praying that I can live it. Um, we also do prayer, of course, in our quiet times. We pray for the issues. Um, and that goes on through the day, though, mm -hmm. not just in the morning. My quiet time happens after I wake up, make breakfast for Taya, and then I watch the news. If I, I watch all through like an hour program of news while I drink coffee and then she's crazy so like then she goes down for a nap and that's when I like open up the Bible and then I, I, I try to, to meditate on it, try to clear my mind of yeah, any... You're it, watching the news? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's a perfect time for you. Know, that's, the news everything is, is quiet. so yeah. stressful. But, it, but it's the perfect time for him because everything is so quiet. Yeah, yeah. When I when you kids were small, that's what I did too. Wait, wait till you have a nap. Or yeah. My constant attention. I know there's the scripture that says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God," and all these things. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, Matthew six thirty-three. What is that scripture I'm trying to say? Yeah, that really your needs. But but I was thinking like is that mean seek ye first? Like do you have to do it at the very beginning of the day or do you think you can do it like on a break or on like a baby's nap time or like if yeah. it's seven o'clock at night and you've got five minutes while you're waiting in line yeah. at somewhere and you have a Bible app? In the morning. No. That doesn't mean first. First means he's first foremost in your life. It doesn't mean it's a time schedule. You put him first, even if he's last in your day? <laughs> well, he isn't really, because you're praying, you know. Right. Hopefully you're praying. I think a good thing is, like, whenever you can. What if you'd work yeah. a night shift? When you... Pray without ceasing. Oh, yeah. Pray without ceasing. Right, pray, pray at any point you can. Open the Bible yeah. whenever you can. Or maybe instead of watching Netflix, or you know, I think it's okay even to watch news, things. Even the news, I can't handle without being in the Word first. All right. Like what I do. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you mentioned well. One, you mentioned one thing that's very important. I think that's meditate on the Word. You know. Mm-hmm. That really helps um, solidify it. It's hard to do because you have all these thoughts about everything coming into your mind, and you know while you're reading, you you're thinking about what you gotta do and everything. <laughs> it's just in your brain, and then it's hard to just look at the scripture you're reading and just absorb it. But some days are worse than others. It's a discipline, right? <laughs> some days you don't get. You feel like you're not getting anything. Even if you do have time to sit and read. Yeah, right. That's it's another thing. More than you think you are. When I got when I got saved, I felt like every time I opened the Bible, scripture was leaping off of the page into my heart. Now I feel like it's not I like that. Yeah. When you're a new believer it just you, the yeah. scriptures are just, you know, awesome to a new believer. Yeah. But you you know, you know, all the things that might go through your mind and stuff like that. And somebody told told me uh, when I was first starting a quiet time is to have a pencil and paper or something somewhere to take notes. Just write all that stuff down, you know, so you don't so you can look at it later, you know. 
committed to God. Oh, write all the stuff in your head down. Yeah. So yeah. you just get it out. Because it, sometimes it's important, you know. It is because of the Lord's mercy and loving kindness that we are not consumed. Because his tender compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great and abundant is your stability and faithfulness. That's awesome. Thank God for that. <laughs> he definitely wants to get in touch with us. He just loves us to death, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's awesome to have parents that follow God. It it's choking me up a little bit right now, but you know, that have prayed for me when I needed it and brought me back to Christ, you know, when I was off the rails. So um, thanks for that. I'm just very thankful to have that heritage in our family. And in case so thankful that you're catching on to it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it, you know, if there and wasn't you people, will, you will model that for Taya. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so will I will attempt to, and God will hopefully help a lot. But okay, well I'm gonna just um, I'm gonna stop this. But um, you guys have a good night, and I'll I'll probably see you soon. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Bye bye.